Welcome back to a very special Friday edition of the Cross Border Interviews Entertainment Rundown. If you haven't, please go back and listen to Thursday's episode where we talked about the Academy Awards and the 94th Academy Awards and the technical categories of the 94th Academy Awards. Now, uh, we, uh, if you listened, you know that Michael and I disagreed on a lot of the uh, categories, sure, to, yeah. too much of his surprise, um, but we are back. We did not destroy each other. We have not completely ended our friendship because of it, but here we are. We are going to- Not talk- yet. Best actress hasn't happened yet. There you go. <laughs> we have eight, eight categories to do. We are going to try and make this actually an hour. Probably not going to happen. Probably going to be a little bit longer than an hour, but- We are going to talk about the uh, top eight categories for the Academy Awards that are happening this Sunday. Michael, welcome back. Thank you for doing this once again. It feels like we have not changed clothes and, oh, wow, shocker. Like, look at us. We we are just so prepared. It's almost like we pre-recorded this. (laughs) Shh. This is live. Live. (laughs) Live from New York. It's Saturday night. (laughs) It's Friday morning at eight o'clock and all the, it looks very dark in both of our screens. Uh, Okay. So we have best adapted screenplay, best original screenplay, best supporting actress, actor, best actress, best actor, best director, and best picture to go through. Michael, what's your thoughts on what we've talked about so far? Any surprises, any shocks that you want to just mention before we get into this? I'm just shocked that you and I are fully riding the dune train i'm also very happy that you're not playing to win because when i win it'll make me very happy (laughs) but what if i win what if i win what if i if you i listen last year if you had not listened to me you probably would have picked the father over chadwick boseman so but girl I'm just going to put this out there. So uh, for those who haven't, who don't know, I'm in a RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, uh, like, pool, a survivor pool. And we, like, we bet on who's going to win. I, I, I use my insight, like, my amazing ability to know what's going on. And I ask people, like Michael, who has a better understanding of drag queen culture than I do. And for the UK versus the world, he was like, you need to put all your money on this person because they're totally going to win. They're totally going to win. <laughs> whoa, hold on. I said Blue Hydrangea or Mo Heart, you need to bet on those two because they're going to be the ones that are most likely to win. And you said, I'm going with Baga. And I said, are you sure? I did say blue. I did say blue. I'm going to have to start recording all of our conversations. I did say blue. (laughs) Probably. But anyway, I lost money because of Michael, so maybe he doesn't know exactly what's going on here. (laughs) So with that, I'm excited to have you back. Uh, Thank you for coming back. Hey, people are already going to at me. I'm feeling personally attacked right now. (laughs) Don't say that, because every time you say that, I get at least two emails. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not personally attacked. I also did not lose him money. I did say from the jump, I don't feel comfortable playing with your money like this. And he said, no, it's fine. Well, it wasn't my money you were playing with. You were playing with my husband. You were playing with your husband's lost. money. <laughs> you still lost. Um, uh, but you'll probably win season 14. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, th- later on tonight, we'll find out after that lip sync, Ralala Palooza, whatever. Oh, you um, haven't watched that bullshit yet? Oh, I did. I just, it was an hour of my life I want back. We'll talk about that off the camera because uh-huh. we, we have topics about that. But we got let's, so much to talk. Let's talk about the 94th Academy Awards. Eight subject, eight categories that we have to digest here in uh, an hour and a bit, but let's get it going. Starting off, um, Best Adapted Screenplay. And the nominees for the 94th Academy Awards for Best Adapted Screenplay are Coda, Drive My Car, Dune, The Lost Daughter, The Power of the Dog. Michael, can you take it away for this one for a second? Sure. Um, As much as I would love to see drive my car or coda win because i really like the scripts there i just feel like the academy is going to give it to power of the dog i think dune throw it out like i don't think it's going to be 
I don't think it's even a top contender in this category. And Lost Daughter, I was bored the entire movie. No, thank you. Nothing. You picked Lost Daughter, didn't you? You, you, I, I really liked Coda. I really liked Drive My Car, but an international script, I think, is going to have a harder time uh, with kind of getting the tchotchke here. Um, just because a lot of people are probably going to just go, no thanks, and just not pick it um, or not watch it even. And so that's hard to kind of gauge it. And then Coda was great. I love Marley Matlin, but I think it's going Power of the Dog. Hi. <laughs> so time of death of friendship. <laughs> Friday You're morning. picking Lost Daughter, aren't you? I am. Okay. So really? why I'm picking The Lost Daughter? Because I want to give some clarification of why I'm choosing this here. I'm looking at the awards prior to this. So I'm not looking at it as a Oscar winner. I'm looking at it as who's going to win as in who, as, uh, rather than who should win. Who should win is Coda. I think well, Coda yes, but great. that's not going to win. <laughs> exactly. I think the lost dog, Maggie Gyllenhaal has done incredibly well on the circuit of all the independent film awards. And she's been picking up a lot of uh, not, uh, awards for best adapted screenplay for the lost daughter. Now I could be completely wrong and I probably will be, but I I'm hedging my bets because the, the, the more we get into this, you'll realize that Michael and I really don't, have the same taste in movies, but I think The Lost Daughter wasn't bad. Olivia Coleman, as if you've watched the movie review, Olivia Coleman did hold that category or that movie. She was basically the only reason why the movie was made. I the think only reason the, why the movie's gotten anything. I think the screenplay wasn't bad. I think it's the best out of the ones that we see, like The Power of the Dog. And we'll talk about that, why I think The Power of the Dog is not going to pick up a lot of awards here today. Um, but I think the Lost Daughter is potentially going to win, or it's going to win the best adapted screenplay. All right. I mean, I think Coda was great, but I think if we're being completely honest, I would say Drive My Car is the best of the script. But and like I said, a lot of that was are... my second. That was my second. Yeah. It was a close because I was like, okay, what's going on here? Who's going to win this? But the issue is the <laughs> Academy vote people watching these movies aren't they don't have all this endless time to watch movies and then they really only watch things that they get nominated that get nominated they're not going to even give half of the international films probably the time of day they most likely are not watching drive my car they're going to see it's nominated best picture and nominated international film and give it to international film um unless they get a lot of buzz like drive my car is fantastic you have to watch it like parasite got in which case then it shifts to that direction but I don't know if Drive My Car is getting the same buzz Parasite got. I um, think, but I think the, we'll go ahead. But Drive My, I mean, I'm, I will be happy, happy to be surprised here, but I think it's, I think it's going to go Power of the Dog because I feel like they're trying to, this is going to be a category they can set Power of the Dog up to, to like justify it winning best picture. Um, and I'm not saying it's my best picture pick because we're not there yet and I'm yeah, not, and yeah. I'm not there yet. But I think that's a way that the voters can kind of justify that. Can we just take a moment and just uh, uh, try to figure out why a short story that is Drive My Car was nominated for adapted screenplay that turned into a three-hour movie? That's what I just want to know. <laughs> like, taking liberties is one thing, but <laughs> taking like the entire liberty of what the short story is Loved it. Yeah, there you go. So you are locking in for say, Power of the Dog. Power of the Dog. I am locking in for The Lost Daughter. Uh, Dune will probably win this for some strange reason, no doubt. <laughs> Don't even say that. And the only reason I say that is because it followed the book better than the uh, the original Dune did. So maybe, who knows? Oh, yep. no, thank you. Best original screenplay. And the Academy Award nominees of the 94th Academy Awards uh, for Best Original Screenplay are Belfast, Don't Look Up, King Richard, Licorice 
pizza. The worst person in the world. I think you know where I'm going on this one. I think I know where you're going on this one, but I will start with me. There's two movies in this category that I do not believe should be in this category, but that is me. Only one of them I'm going to agree with you on. Don't Look Up should not be in this category. Agreed. The worst person in the world should not be in this category. Disagree. I really like that script. But again, it's a foreign language film. People are not going to watch it. Exactly. So it's not going to pick it up. No. I liked it. I really, I really liked it. I know you did not like Worst Person in the World. I found it, again, irreverent. I love a good irreverent okay. film. Um, my pick for this is uh, Belfast. Knew that was coming. Of course. I, I enjoyed Belfast. I really enjoyed Belfast. Uh, I, I think it's probably one of the better films of the year. It's not my best picture pick, but I think it's one of the best uh, uh, picture, uh, films of the year. I know Michael doesn't like it, and he probably like just no, I completely, like Belfast. completely overlooked it because black and white, and dear God, we actually have a film in black and white. <laughs> no, I liked, I liked Belfast. I gave it, I think, a four star. We, we will find out next week on the movie reviews, not this Oh, movie. is it next <laughs> week? I don't remember what I gave it. I, um, I like Belfast. Um, I, you're, I giving liked... it, you're giving it to Paul, aren't you? Licorice Pizza. I'm giving it to Licorice Pizza. I, and I'm telling, okay, I really like that style of film because I really liked Lady Bird. I really liked Licorice Pizza. I know you did not. It is not your style of movie. And I'm, I've made peace with that. I've accepted that journey. Um, it's also Hollywood porn. It's LA County porn. Any kind of movie like that, they always try and give it something. Like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It was just shots of Hollywood, name dropped locations in Hollywood. People in Hollywood and the Academy love that sort of shit. That's why La La Land did so well too. La La Land was not a great movie, but it won all these awards because it was Hollywood porn and it was of the Hollywood experience. And that's who the voters are. Licorice Pizza, I really enjoyed. And I also totally was like, this is falling for the Hollywood porn. I'm like, oh my God, I lived in Sherman Oaks and they're mentioning that she's from Sherman Oaks and and Sino and that like, I fell for it, loved it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great fun, like coming of age film. I will say the ending, very problematic. Um, but I think that I think a good way to like reward this movie and like give it its own little tchotchke is in screenplay because I do think the screenplay was the script was fucking amazing sorry I'm sorry to this man to quote Kiki Palmer I, I, I don't know what to say Listen, I, we, I we have very this, different movie tastes. We do, we do. I just found it very long-winded. I found it very slow. And, okay, I understand the whole Hollywood porn idea. To me, it was just not a good movie. I, I, okay. wouldn't, I wouldn't even have nominated for any categories, but that's me. I mean, I think it deserved the nominations it got. I think this is the only one it's going to pick up, though, for the win. Probably. So that is Best Original Screenplay. I am locking in Belfast. Michael is locking in Licorice Pizza. And it will probably go to Don't Look Up. Stop. Well, that's what I'm doing for the, these last eight categories. I'm just going to tell you which one it's going to It's be. going to don't look up. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, go, don't look up. Don't look up. Don't, don't, no. Don't put that in the air. I don't want that. Okay. Our last uh, category before we take a quick break is best supporting actress. The reason why I think this one's going to be very quick and it's going to be very uh not shocking for a lot of people who we're going to choose, but the Best Supporting Actress, the nominees for the 94th Academy Award Best Supporting Actress category are Jesse Buckley, The Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose, West Side Story, Judy Dench, Belfast, 
Kirsten Dunst, The Power of the Dog. And if you are wondering why Michael is looking so intently at the screen right now is because he told me about twice how to pronounce the next person's name. I am going to completely butcher it, probably. Anjanine Ellis. King Anjanu Ellis. Anjanu Ellis. King Richard. Michael. Uh, for the next four categories, we're going to talk about not just who we is going to win, but who we think should win as well. So yep. let, let's go with who do you think should win first? And I will, should win? Yes. And then, uh, then at the end, I'll ask you who you're going to lock in for, uh, who you're going to lock in as your will win. So who should win in this category? Um, if the Oscars could do a tie... Anjanu and Judy. If they can't do a tie, Judy don't. Wow. I Judy Dench was so good. She was. She was the, she was one of the best actresses, best characters in that whole film. Oh that my awesome. god. But Anjanu Ellis was fucking amazing. Okay. What about you? What, who who should win for you? You say Judy? I'm gonna say Judy should win. Judy should win this category. I think Judy is an amazing actress. Um, her one time that she's actually ever won the Academy Award, she was only on the screen for like a minute and a half in the entire movie, which is fantastic. So um, I wouldn't be upset if Anjanine won. Anjanine. Anjanine won, but I know it's not going to Jesse Buckley for The Lost Daughter. No. It's not going to Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog. No. Both were good performances. Dressing a little bit less, but Kirsten did give a good uh, uh, performance. But I think you and I... Ariana DeBose is going to win this. She's won everything. She has literally won everything. It is not going to be a shocker. Michael and I... This is... Like, at least we know we're going to get one win. (laughs) Okay. Because Ariana, I know I'm getting Ariana DeBose. <laughs> yeah, Ariana DeBose is going to win Best Supporting Actress in this category. It is not shocking that she is going to win. She was fan. It will be shocking if she loses. Yes. So we all remember the last year's Oscars where everyone thought because he was picking up all the awards. Chadwick that Chadwick was going to win. And then at the end, Anthony Hopkins, because they had that groundwell of support. Uh, people were actually watching these films and going, oh, wow, he actually gave a good performance. And Anthony Hopkins won over Chadwick Bose, uh, Boseman. So Ariana DeBose is getting the groundwell of support right now. And she hasn't lost it. Like every, every time she's nominated, she wins. She is yeah. always winning in this category. So this is not going to be a shocker. Like they should just like, if she could just get drunk after the very, because usually the very first awards are best supporting actor, best supporting actress, just to get people involved in the show. So that way people tune in. So maybe do Ariana DeBose first and then she can get slammed afterwards, just completely drunk. So she's like, yeah, one, because it, it's going to be no surprise to anyone that she takes away this award. And she's brilliant. Like she's, I really love her as an actress, period. And it's a very well-deserved award. What is she the absolute best this year? No, but she's picking, at least not for me, but she's picking it up. So yeah. I, I think I think this is a shoe in I, I agree completely on that one. So we are both locking in for Ariana DeBose for West Side Story as Anita for Best Supporting Actress. So there you go. Six categories we agree on. Shaka! <laughs> So, and I was going to say, and it's probably going to go to Don't Look Up, but there's no one in Don't Look Up. There's no Don't Look Up. So let's head over to Best Supporting Actor. The nominees for Best Supporting Actor at the 94th Academy Awards are Syrian Haynes for Belfast, Troy Kotzer for Coda, Jesse Plemons for The Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons for Being the Ricardos, and Cody Smith McPhee for Being the Ricardos. Michael. We might disagree on this one, actually. Yeah. Will we? We might. I'm, I'm still hedging my bets on this one. I'm still hedging my bets on this one, but I, I think I know where I'm going, but I, it's very confusing. I know where I'm going. Best so, one, so Troy who, Kotzer. 
Best one, Troy Kotzer. Okay, well, you didn't get me to answer. You didn't let me answer my, ask my question, but what? Oh, sorry, ask your question. No, your question. no you're I'm already, sorry, you're I'm just so excited about this one. Who, ask your question. Sh who should win? Troy Kotzer. <laughs> Who's going to win? Troy Kotzer. I think J.K. Simmons should win. Okay, I could see that. I could I could get behind that. I think out of the three uh, acting categories that being the Ricardos were nominated in, he was the best. Okay. Uh, but who do I think will win? So we, we talk about that groundwell of support. We talked about how Chadwick Boseman Anthony Hopkins. Chadwick was the favorite going into it. And then people started watching The Father and went, wow, actually, Anthony gave a good uh, performance. So if you remember back probably about December, even before that, a lot of people were pegging that Cody Smith McPhee was going to win this award, this nomination, because he was picking up all the categories. And then when people started yeah. watching Coda, people went, holy shit. This is great. This is yeah. amazing. So people started giving Troy he picked up the SAG award I think he picked up the uh, producers guild award as well and coded yep. it as well so I think Troy is going to win this it's probably fair game that Troy is going to win this but I would not be upset if J.K. Simmons won this as well but he probably I won't J.K. Simmons is the long no Jesse Plemons is the long shot with J.K. Simmons close behind yeah um, so that is uh, our locked in uh, categories for best supporting actor for Troy Kotzer for Coda. Uh, we'll talk a little bit a little bit more about that in a few minutes after we come back from a break in the best picture category because we have a lot to digest in the best picture. So we'll be right back with uh, probably about an hour's worth of conversation when it comes to best actress. A joke, probably about like twenty minutes. <laughs> Okay, joke, probably like half hour. Joke, probably about 10 minutes. Um, but we'll be right back after this quick break uh, because, you know, we have to get paid and we have to make sure our sponsors are happy when we put out these ads. So we'll be right back after a brief message, guys. Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit calgaryceasarfest.com and get your tickets today. Welcome back. Um, if you haven't already, get your tickets for the upcoming YY Caesar Fest here in the city of Calgary, home of the Caesar Cocktail. Uh, there will be great uh, bars in at the event who will be taking their own uh, spin on the Caesar Cocktail that was created here in the great city of Calgary. So if you haven't, head over to Eventbrite, type in YY Caesar Fest, scroll down, click on the link, and it'll take you there. Um, Michael, so no matter what we say in the next like 10 minutes, we're, we're going to stay friends, right? Um, you may not, I, we might get vicious. I just want to the viewers at home or listeners at home, we really do truly care about each other. That being said, the next 15 to 20 minutes, all bets are off. It's going to be a bloodbath. It will. Best Actress at the 94th Academy Awards. The nominees are Jessica Chastain, The Eyes of Tammy Faye as Tammy Faye Baker, Olivia Colman, The Lost Daughter as Lita Caruso, Penelope Cruz, Parallel Mothers as Janice Martinez Morano, Nicole Kidman, being the Ricardos as Lucille Ball, Kirsten Stewart Spencer as Diana, Princess of Wales. <laughs> if I don't talk, we can't talk about it. Michael, you're wrong. I'm right. Let's move on to actor. <laughs> um, incorrect. Okay. 
Let's like logically look at this first. Logically, we never looked. Who through. is who? It, like, let's. We have to. Okay, this is one. Like, because we're gonna fight, we have to rank them. I think. Who is fifth place? Let no, we can't. Oh no, you're gonna save my girl, aren't you? Fifth place. Who's the one we can like throw out? Penelope Cruz. I'd say Kristen Stewart. I was gonna say Kristen Stewart, but I think she gave a better performance than uh, Penelope Cruz in my in my honest opinion. Um, I think Penelope Cruz would be the next one I would, th- I love Parallel Mothers. I thought Penelope Cruz did a fantastic job. Like all five of these women were freaking amazing this year. Yep. Um, so this is not like a, well, none of them should be there. Like, I think all of them fully deserve to be there. And let's just, uh, just, I want to make sure that people know. Okay. If you haven't watched all five of these films and have only watched the house of Gucci, take a moment Watch, watch the these others. five films and then honestly tell me with a straight face, Lady Gaga should have been one of these categories. It should have been a, a replacement for one of these uh, women. I would highly suspect anyone would be able to come back at me and say, no, this person should have been taken off. Now, or I, take Kristen Stewart off. That's the only one maybe I could see people do. I would have said Penelope Cruz, but that's here nor there. Um, so just Take a moment before you start coming at us because Lady Gaga was good in House of Gucci. She was not great in House of Gucci. She did not give a performance that was great. So we're immediately taking Penelope and Kristen Stewart out. Yes. So that leaves Nicole Kidman, Olivia Coleman, and Jessica Chastain. Yes. I think the best one and the one that I'm going with is Jessica Chastain. I think I would then put, I think it would be for me, Kristen Stewart, then Penelope Cruz, then Olivia Coleman, then Nicole Kidman, then Jessica. And I think that's where my order of the five would be. And I think that you have Olivia Coleman at the top. Now you have Nicole, you have Nicole Kidman? I have Nicole Kidman. Come through being the Ricardos. Yeah. I liked it. I liked being- I did like it too. I think, uh, and this this is, okay, we, we've been friendly for the first few minutes. This is when it gets nasty. Not nasty, but friend, friend nasty. I did not like the eyes of Tammy Faye. The entire is, time okay. I was watching that movie, I was looking at someone in a fat suit. And the entire time I watched that movie, I was like, okay, this is not Tammy Faye. This is Jessica Chastain playing Tammy Faye. And that's the part that I despise. And that's the part when I went, nope, cannot agree with this. Where with Nicole Kidman, I was watching Lucille Ball. Tammy Faye Baker did not come across in that movie one iota, in my opinion. And I think that if she wins this, it's because Nicole Kidman has already won an Oscar. So we're going to give it to the person who's the second place. Disagree. I, I think. Well, I disagree uh, with you. I'll, just, I'll let you have your moment. Let me have, this is my moment. <laughs> to quote Jack Race. Um, I think Jessica Chastain gave Tammy Faye, like full Tammy Faye. Yeah, gave I Tammy think... Faye the garbage because no, it was a bad no, no, fucking I... performance. Let me have my moment. Um... Nicole Kidman, I see off screen. I thought, yeah, Lucille Ball on screen. I didn't fully buy it. Sorry, girl. When she was when she was given the whole like I'm Lucille Ball on the TV show, I it didn't do it for me as much as Tammy Faye did. I thought Jessica gave me the full Tammy Faye moment from like from tip to toe, and. I was obsessed with that movie. I left that movie just feeling like this is it. Like, I don't need anything more on Tammy Faye. Like this movie was the definitive factor for me. Um, And I am a little sad Andrew Garfield is not nominated for it also, but again, he's nominated in best actor. When we get there, we'll probably fight about that too. Um, (laughs) But Jessica Chastain for eyes of Tammy Faye, I, I, I'm giving it to her. I think she's going to win it. I think she was the best one. I have to. I have to. I have to be Tammy. I have to. Just because you have to doesn't mean you should. No, I have to. Why? I Why? Why? It was so good. It was just that, oh. 
I enjoyed it so much. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm it was sorry that you writing. did not enjoy it. It was a bad movie. Uh, Andrew Garfield was one probably the second worst part of the whole thing. The only good redeeming part of that whole movie was Vincent D'Onofrio as Billy. Pretty. You don't need to know. Sorry, your type. Yes. You don't need to know your type of men. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Know. I'm sorry. I have to. I. I. We're gonna have to. We have to disagree on this because no, I just don't. think I will. Me. I will convince you by the end of this. You will never convince me that this was not it. So the whole we... movie was it. No. no. And I think it was Nicole Kidman. I think she gave one of the best performances of her career. And if and the this... Oscar goes to Olivia Coleman. Like that's what's gonna happen here. <laughs> It will go to freaking uh, whoever was Kristen in Don't Stewart. Look Up. <laughs> and they're going to well, so write in. What if them. that happens? What if that happens? What if there is a split? Because there is a lot of people who do like Nicole Kidman. There's a lot of people and who do Justin. like Jessica. Could it's going to be Olivia Coleman. Could it's it be, a, be Olivia. like Olivia Coleman go, what the fuck here, guys? Yeah. I think it splits and it goes either Olivia Coleman or it splits and it goes Penelope Cruz. <laughs> Sorry, Kristen. You'll probably get a nomination later on. I just, I don't think that Kristen has any shot at getting it. Um, I just want to make a mention here. Most of the other awards have been very similar to the uh, Academy Award nominations. SAG. uh, Yeah. Like, they're very close to nominations. The outlier in this is the BAFTAs. The BAFTAs did not nominate one of these women for the Best Actress Award. Did not. Lady Gaga got it. Emily Jones, Amelia Jones from Coda, Renetta Renisa for the West Person in the World, Tessa Thompson for Passing, uh, Joanna Scanlon for After Love. So usually you can tell by the BAFTAs where the BAFTAs go, the Academy goes. You cannot tell in this category. Now, I don't want to say you're right, but I don't want to say. I think. Are you th- locking in, Jessica? Okay, we talk about the 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 groundwell of support. The because if you remember back in November and December, there was a lot of people saying that Nicole did an amazing job and she was picking up a lot of awards. And then they started seeing, they watched uh, Eyes of Tammy Faye, because you have to remember Eyes of Tammy Faye came out in September and not a lot of people had seen it. And it was one of those like sleeper movies that was like, okay, whatever. Jessica has been picking up a lot of awards here. She sure has. So I am taking this moment right here, right now. And I'm going to lock in. Actually, who are you locking in first? I'm locking in Jessica Chastain. I'm so confused right now. I want to lock like, in. If you say, I'm literally like starting to cry over you. You're going to say Jessica Chastain. I'm like so excited. My, who should win and who will win are two different things for me on this movie. Who should win for me is Nicole Kidman. Who will win, who will get the, who will get the award is Jessica Chastain and Eyes of Tammy Faye. I do not agree with this one, but in sakes of me wanting to win, I am putting my money right here, right now on Jessica Chastain for the eyes of Tammy Faye, because this will be the Chadwick Boseman, Anthony Hopkins of this year. Oh, I'm literally like over here, like welling up in tears. I don't know why. I'm like having a full moment. (laughs) You, you, you turn me around. I'm not a fan of the movie. I'm not a fan of the actress. But you're I, a fan of winning. I'm a fan of winning. So with that, we are both locking in for Jessica Chastain in the eyes of Tammy Faye for best actress. Here we are. <laughs> Much better. Only a 15, only 12 minutes of talking about best actress. <laughs>
Okay, we have one last acting category before we move on to the top two, the big ones. Sure. That is Best Actor. Best Actor nominees for the 94th Academy Awards are Javier Bardem being the Ricardos as Desi Arnaz, Benedict Cumberbatch uh, in The Power of the Dogs as Phil Burbank, Andrew Garfield in Tick, Tick, Boom as Jonathan Larson, Will Smith in King Richard as Richard Williams and Denzel Washington in The Tragedy of Macbeth as Lord Macbeth. Like we had done in The Best Actress. Worst out of the top five here. Who would you say is guaranteed not to win this tomorrow or on Sunday? Denzel. I will agree with that. Next would be for me, Andrew Garfield. You're going to say Ben Dick Cumberbatch, aren't you? I was going to say Javier Bardem. Wow. I, I would have put him third. I put Benny third. I think but, Andrew Garfield is, and I feel like Andrew Garfield should win it, but I'm also not mad at Will Smith. For anyone who wants to write me and only me, please send your comments and questions to crossborderphotography at gmail.com or go to our website and fill in the contact form and you can submit your negative press after I say this. Will Smith gave the exact same performance in King Richard that he did in The Pursuit of Happiness. I don't know if I agree with that. I really don't think I agree with that. I I'm a fan of Will Smith. I he will probably win this award. He's won everything for. It. I think he's winning. I think exactly. it's this is another Ariana DeBose. This is locked up. Yeah. I don't think he should though. Uh, listen, I think Andrew Garfield was my favorite of the performances. I, I think it was just so brilliant. But I'm also, I really liked King Richard. I watched it last night and thoroughly enjoyed it. Wow, you watched it Thursday Will's, night? Yes. And I thought Will Smith just was did such a brilliant job. And I, I really... I really do think he deserves it. I, I Andrew Andrew was very good, but I I mean he. I think it's Will has Smith. he been nominated before? Andrew, no, Will. No, that's a very good question. I don't believe so, unless he was for Pursuit of Happiness. And that's what I was about to say. Was he nominated for Pursuit of Happiness or not? And I just want to make sure. Uh, I'm just googling that. I'm looking oh, it up nope. right now. He has been nominated three times. Oh, he has been, never won, though, right? He has never won. Well, he's sorry, he's been nominated twice before, and then he's been nominated twice in uh, this year's Academy Award. He was nominated for Ali and the Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, I think he's winning this one. I think this is his time. I think it's his time. I think it was a good movie. I think that the, uh, I think it's just, he's a good actor. He's going to win. I don't think that it was probably the best performance out of the bunch, out of the five. But what was your top performance then? Garfield. Oh. Javier All Bardem right. was second for me. Oh. Then Will Smith third. I uh, think it would have been Andrew Will, but I really, I really think Will's going to win it, and I really did like it. Yeah, no, understandable on that one. So that is Best Actor. We are both locking in for, wow, Best Actress and Best Actor, both locking in for the same person. We, shock, all shock. of the acting categories, we agree. 
That's true. That's true. In the next after the break, after this quick break, we'll probably disagree on the top movies. But here we go. We'll be right back after this quick message because we have to make sure that we get our advertisers in. So we'll be right back, guys. Horror fans unite. The cross-border interviews with Chris Brown is pleased to offer a free audible copy of David Mercer's newest book, Living Death, A Love Story. The book is about Nick, who having suffered the horrible loss of his wife, plays the hero and rescues Jenny from her abusive boyfriend. Deciding that he has one last adventure in him, he invites her on a cross-country road trip. Little did they know that the world, as they knew it, was ending. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca to enter into the draw. Simply tell us your favorite horror film by April 14th and be entered. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for sticking with us through that commercial break. Uh, if you haven't already, head over to the crossborderinterviews.ca website and submit your favorite horror film to be entered into a draw for the living death uh, audible, audible book uh, by author David Mercer. Highly recommend it. It is a great book. Uh, it's great to pick up and take on the road and listen to on your car ride to work every morning. So highly recommend that you enter into the draw. It's great. So Michael, we have two categories left and we have about 15 minutes so we can get through these. Probably not though. Sure. Because we always talk a lot more than an hour for every episode. Best director. The nominees for the 94th Academy Awards for Best Director are Kenneth Branda in Belfast, Ryushuku Hamaguchi, Drive My Car, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, and Steven Spielberg for West Side Story. Michael, what are your tops, what are your bottoms, and what are you thinking here? Right from the jump, throw West Side Story out. Yep. I, I think of all of them, this has the least likely chance to win. Um, Spielberg's great. We love Spielberg. I think I said it either this, epi this, this episode or the Thursday, yesterday one. I um, think it was just a shot for shot remake with a new filter. I, was, yeah. I just didn't, I, I think this is one that, throw it out. Uh, Drive My Car, I, again, really liked it. Is a top, top pick for me. Just, for sure deserves to be here. I think, again, this is going to be the situation where not enough people watched it that's voting and they're just going to say, well, we gave it international. We don't need to give it director. And so that one can be taken out. Licorice Pizza is an underdog here. I know you did not like it, but I think looking at Licorice Pizza, uh, it could potentially win because Power of the Dog, Belfast are the top two here. And I think if they split the vote, Licorice Pizza comes in. I think who should win and who will win? Who should win is Kenneth Bregna for Belfast. I think it was a great film. I think uh, artistically it was filmed perfectly. The, the performances that he got out of uh, the kid and some of the actors were fantastic. So great. I think Kenneth Bragna should win. Who will win? If we're talking about looking at the stats and looking at all the other award ceremonies, uh, Jane Campion will probably win for Power of the Dog. She's been picking up every single one here. Um, so that is my prediction, and that's who I'm locking in. What about yourself? Who are you locking in? I flipped a coin, so Power of the Dog. <laughs> I couldn't Did decide you actually? Go fast. I did. I flipped a coin. I'm like, heads, power of the dog, tails, Belfast, and heads came up. Okay. Well, the that's, a, the that's an interesting way. And I guess we I are... could not, I could not decide. And I like, I like Kenneth Bring this uh, directing style. I think he's really good at a lot of things he does, but I'm just very shocked that I'm not, I'm not shocked. The only issue is the only unknown in this whole category, and I've locked in Power of the Dog, is the recent controversy around Power of the Dog and Jane Campion. So yeah. with that, that's my only unknown. And I'm not sure if it's enough of a backlash where people will say, okay, let's give it or a Or if enough people have already voted. 
that's the other thing too, right? Because Sam Elliott. Was so for those who don't know, for those who don't know, um, Sam Elliott, uh, actor, famous actually, like Western actor, uh, came out and said, the power of the dog isn't about cowboys. They don't look like cowboys. And Jane Campion basically said, I don't need to take advice from you because you're not really a cowboy. You're a fucking actor pretty much. And uh, um, Jane Campion also at the BAFTAs made a comment how Venus and Serena are great, but they don't have to play against men like she does. Oh, that's where I thought you were going with the Oh no, I didn't I was know like, about that one. I didn't know about. Oh that yeah, she full on in her like acceptance speech was like, "We love Venus and Serena, but like they don't have to pay, play against men like I do." And they Venus and Serena did. Like, let's not act like that. Like they have many times, and it just was very tone deaf. But again, it was so past when many people have submitted their votes. She's probably. It probably isn't affecting her, but you never know. Yeah, there could be a groundswell of support news because the vote had to be in like last week, didn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, the 13th or something like that. So it's an interesting time we live in. So here we are. Um, But that is uh, Best Director. And we've both locked in uh, Power of the Dog and Jamie Campion. So there we go. The ultimate ward of the night on sunday usually it's the last one last last year it wasn't but usually it's the last one and that is best picture the nominees for the 94th academy award best picture or belfast coda don't look up drive my car dune king richard licorice pizza nightmare alley the power of the dog and west side story 10 awards that are 10 nominees michael um any odds on favorite that you're going with or who should win here and who will win let's talk about who should win first so statistically i have never guessed this category right statistically i don't get best picture because the one i usually want i usually pick what i want to win um last year what were the nominees nomad lad won i did not go with nomad land okay i went with jude and the black messiah uh, no trial of the chicago seven no the father no uh mama uh chadwick boseman movie no the um Oh, fuck, what was her name? She did the, this, it was the sexual assault one. I'm pulling it up right now because I want to know. Uh, best picture, uh, The Father, Judah and the Black Messiah, Mank Marani, Promising Young Women. That's what I went with. Okay. So maybe you officially break your uh, streak this year. Who knows? We'll see. Um, Who should that be? being said, who should win? Ah. Dune. No, not Dune. <laughs> I was looking right at it and it just went into my brain and I'm like, no, that shouldn't win. Um, drive my car. Should, should win. Should. 100% should. Uh, Coda also should win if it's not drive my car. Belfast. Great. Um, I like licorice pizza. I don't think it's winning. Who I like win? Nightmare Alley. Who should not win? Throw West Side Story out. Throw out Don't Look Up. I would consider throwing out Doom. Also, but knowing our luck, Don't Look Up or Doom is winning. Because <laughs> um, Don't Look Up, I don't. I've not given a single award to, and I think. I think also this could easily be like this category usually can be an upset because like three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Everyone thought that was winning or Call Me By Your Name and then fucking Nemo the movie won. Shape of Water. Oh, Nemo the movie, okay. Fucking, fucking Nemo. And then even with the Green Book, right? Yeah, Green Book won and like nobody expected that to win. Yeah. And that's the name of the game that is the best pitcher. You have to head your bets and pick the uh, so for me who should win Belfast. Oh 
I like, I, I love Dakota, loved it with a passion. I think Belfast was a little bit better for storytelling. I like the emotional family drama that is Coda, but I like the overall story that is uh, Belfast. Okay. I don't think King Richard's going to win. I do not think no, King I don't is think so going either. to win. I don't think Drive um, My Car is going to win. I don't think so. Um, now, who will win? This is the million dollar question of who is actually going to win here. And I've got two on the top of my head. I don't think Belfast is going to win. I'm putting that out there right now. I locked that in. Did you lock Belfast in? I'm locking in Belfast. I've not given it a single award this entire night because I've been finding the movies that don't win a single fucking award lately seem to come out of nowhere and win Best Picture. And I think Belfast was overall like a well-rounded, amazing film that you could happily give it Best Picture and be like, done, it makes sense. Even though it doesn't necessarily have the best actor, actress, supporting actor, whatever, or the best technical stuff, it still was overall like a number two in every single category. I think it could easily win best picture interesting take from uh, michael I, again i always pick the wrong one so i could be very wrong here i i'm up in the air so i'm looking at the history of the oscars and usually sure. they go whoever gets best director gets best picture from time to time they don't yeah so and uh, because coda's Coda's director wasn't nominated. It has me thinking that they're going to go with Power of the Dog. But with the groundwell of support that has been Coda for the last few weeks, I am locking in for Coda. Okay, that was my second pick. I, I was just really torn between Belfast and Coda. I don't think the Power of the Dog is going to win. I really don't. I think it's just gotten in when it first, because around Golden Globes, that was one of the only ones people had watched. And people and were the like, one oh, that oh, come it was out. good. Yeah, it was one of the only ones that really had like come out. So people like at the Globes were like, oh yeah, this is great. Let's do that. And then as more people are watching, I just think it's just not holding up to the other movies. So I'm locking in Coda. You're locked Belfast. in Belfast, which is very ironic for anyone who's ever don't you think anyone who's ever watched this show knows that Michael is not a fan of black and white movies. So I know, to, I know. To, I to, literally need to I like need to go throw myself off my roof because of this. Like <laughs> well, for all your friends who are about to listen to this, they're about to come in and just pick everything that you've just said but best picture and then win. <laughs> Listen, anyone that wants, I literally will get like everything but best picture and like a random technical and then occasionally like, because I don't, I don't usually watch all the documentary or like a documentary or short or something like that. Like I never get best picture ever. I hope I get it this year. I think Belfast is the best one, but watch it go to Don't Look Up. I'm being, I'm like, real talk, watch it go to Don't Look Up or do. So. I know. I think the squeaker here is King Richard. I think the dark horse in this whole thing is King Richard. I think the only one I know for sure is not getting it is West Side. <laughs> Like, no, I think the only one that's not getting it for sure is West Side Story and Nightmare Alley. I could see Nightmare Alley being the sleeper here. See, and I think the sleeper is King Richard. I think I think King Richard has enough support that it could be bumped, but I think this was a good year. The, a lot of these are very... I really liked almost all the movies for Best Picture this year. You Which liked, doesn't usually happen. You liked all of them? 
almost all of them. Yeah, I was gonna say I liked all. I of did them, not like, like two. I didn't like Don't Look Up. Sorry, three. I, I yeah, I did not like Don't Look Up. I did not like Power of the Dog, and I enjoyed West Side Story. I don't know if I would have given it best picture, but I enjoyed it. The rest, I all I enjoyed. I liked Dune. I know you didn't like Dune, but I liked Dune. I'm shocked Dune's here, but I liked it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of West Side Story, Licorice Pizza, or uh, Don't Look Up. Those were the three that I was like, okay, maybe you could have just gone seven awards this year, or put Corella in there. <laughs> Well, I, being the Ricardos, we both were shocked to get nominated. Being the Ricardos, I'm shocked that it wasn't uh, nominated for a screenplay. Still shocked. And Aaron then, Sorkin could do no wrong. Yeah, but. I'm a little bit shocked over that. I'm also a little, I know you don't care for it. I am shocked to of Tammy Faye didn't get nominated again. We all know how you feel about it, but I'm shocked it didn't. But that's, I mean, we have our picks now. We do. So we are locked in. Uh, we will figure out who is the winner and who is the loser and we will uh, let you all know what the final bet was on uh, our April edition of the uh, entertainment rundown on the cross-border interviews uh, but Michael thanks for being with us for two days it's been fun it's been exciting any parting words before we let all our fine audience members go um have fun with the Oscars this weekend if you're going to watch. If you can get some of these done, uh, the Thursday episode I did run down a good like weekend viewing. Um, I highly would recommend if you're someone who wants to try like see and kind of play along. It is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's I guess my parting words. And don't be afraid to tell us where we're wrong. Tell us we're up creek on some of these categories. Send us a message on social media. Uh, respond to the episode uh, on social media page. Please don't be afraid to do it publicly because we always love hearing from you. Uh, we are getting a lot of feedback from our movie reviews via our website. So please feel free to submit a movie review. We have some great ones coming up. Uh, we always are open to having a conversation with anyone and uh, hearing how much Chris attacks Michael or how much Michael has to take a, the, the name calling of Mikey and Michael all the time. But please just feel free to reach out to us because we'd be happy to have a conversation and happy to just hear what you think about two guys sitting on zoom and shooting the shit about movies and talking about where I'm wrong. And Michael is totally wrong. Um, good. Bye to that statement. <laughs> So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in for another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent weekend. And remember, guys, get it from behind that. So, uh, I shouldn't say that because I literally just told you to go give us feedback on social media, but get up from behind social media and give us a call, get, have a conversation with somebody because it makes our society better and makes us better. So with that, parting words, Chris Brown, I'm out. No, well, I'm out in more ways than one. Have yourself an excellent day, guys. Talk to you later.